Hi everyone, I'm VJ and this is Tasha. We're from Toronto, Canada. And welcome to the newest edition of Marillion Monthly. Welcome to the second Marillion Monthly. Coming up in this episode, I will be talking to none other than Mr. Steve Rothery. We will be talking about all how all the rehearsals are going, which is surprisingly well for all the Marillion weekends that we have this year. Name the Marillion weekends, Steve. Port Zealand. Correct. Harlem. Correct. Padua. Correct. Uh, Leicester and uh, Montreal. And? And the other one I can't remember. Berlin. And, and Berlin, of course. Yes. So we'll be talking about the Marillion Weekends and we are also having an in-depth talk about Steve's beautiful pedals. And we will also be talking about Steve's solo plans. And there will be an amazing prize for this month's competition winner. A weekend away with Lucy Jordan. <laughs> So hello and welcome. Today's special guest is Mr. Steve Rothery. Steve, we're all set up for you to rehearse, but I think you're also recording some of your solo stuff, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's start by talking about rehearsals for the Marillion Weekends. Dare I ask, how are they going? Incredibly well, I would say. Um, probably unusually so. We're normally at that stage where we're kind of panicking and our heads are about to explode. Um, <laughs> but I'd say we're probably about 95% of the way there, which is quite remarkable, really. Um, that is absolutely amazing. It is. It's sounding great. People are playing, I think, the best they've, they've played. And... Um, I think we've finally got the knack of this after I was gonna all these years. Well, I was going to say that, the, <laughs> as we said last month, this is the 21st anniversary of the Marillion Weekends. Happy right. anniversary to oh. us. And in 21 years of you rehearsing for Marillion Weekends, I've never known you all so calm and so ahead of yourself. So what's different this time? I think it's because we had to learn the new... Album. Spoiler uh, alert! Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> no, I mean, not, not for this, for, for, oh, the, for the tour. When we, when we started touring um, the new album, we had to learn it. And that was such a huge amount of work that uh, anything else seems easy by comparison, quite honestly. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's like an exam, all the little nuances and all the little moments that happen throughout all the tracks. So once you've got that down, anything else is kind of easy. Well, Mark was, um, when we started the one last time, he was talking about, I'm going to whisper the song in your ear. So Mark was talking about that song and yeah. saying you hadn't played it for a while and he'd lost all the sounds. Doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Has he found them all? And how's that going? Uh, no, it's, it's, again, it's sounding really, really good. Uh, we haven't run the front section yet, but... Uh, the rest of the song is sounding really good. Yeah. 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 yeah uh, very happy with it. Is there, is there one song, it, you know, you had the original list of, of songs. Is there anything that you've dropped? Have you gone, have you all gone, oh, we just can't do it. It's sounding terrible. No, not really. No, even things that we've never played before. No spoilers here. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we, we're, we're making work uh, and some things that we haven't played hardly at all. Uh, again. That is just, you, seriously, if we'd put money on this, <laughs> if yeah. we'd had a bet on this a few months ago, there is no way. I, I, I'm so happy for you all. Of course, we, we're just having a week's break, so we might come back next week. <laughs> I'll be completely brain dead again, but fingers crossed. Well, I'm, I'm really, really happy for you all because... It's got you all in a good frame of mind, I think, especially <clears throat> after, the, you know, we haven't been back to Port Zealand since yeah. 2019. It's a big one. I think generally the, the mood within the band is the most positive that I, I can remember, really. Um, yeah, the camaraderie is, is, is better than it's been for a long time. And <laughs> we're actually enjoying each other's company. <laughs> Which doesn't always happen. We, it happens most of the time. But, you know, we have been doing this a bloody long time. So uh, occasionally it can, you know, you can get on each other's nerves. Do you, you personally, do you only rehearse 
here at Racket or do you rehearse at home as well, practicing your solos? And I, I in the early stages, especially, I, I spent I, I spend pretty much every waking moment trying to learn stuff, trying to burn it in. Maybe that's the difference in terms of uh, dedication, because I had to do that with the with the last studio album. Um, but it's a lot for me to remember, a lot of solos, some of which you kind of seem to be able to store in muscle memory and other things that uh, maybe you've only played half a dozen times, you have to really work. Do you um, ever feel that you should change a solo when you go back and revisit it? Do you think, oh, I <clears> could <throat> do that slightly differently or do you just do it as it was originally done? Well, one of these songs that we don't play very often, I can't mention by name. Um, you wouldn't, uh, <laughs> you know, it's very hard with the nuances, the phrasing to play exactly the same. So, you yeah, know, there's a little bit of uh, leeway in there of uh, making it up as you go along. Um, but a lot of them, you know, there's, there's, there's very definite melodies that people want to hear. Mm. Uh, so you can kind of play around with them a little bit, but only to a certain degree. And then you kind of lose the essence of... Uh, what made it special to people. You know, it's a hook, the same way uh, a vocal hook would be a melody that people would have. Yep. The guitar does a similar sort of thing, really. Your, your your solos are obviously legendary within the Marillion community and people always talk about them. Do you have a favourite solo that you like to play from any era, any song? Um, I mean, from the new album, Crow and Nightingale, uh, generally, uh, the second solo in this strange engine is always just satisfying to play because it's it's simple, but it it seems to really resonate with people, and you know the the reaction it gets is 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 uh, is incredible. Well, that kind of um, leads me on to a question that I had for you, which I think I know what your answer is going to be now, which is of all the twenty one years of Marillion weekends. Is there a moment that you really enjoyed live that we could show a, a clip from? One of my favourite moments was when we played The Strange Engine in, in Montreal a few years ago. And, uh, 2009. Oh, God. Seems like only yesterday. Um, and H forgot where he was in the song and came in in the wrong place for, with, with the end lyric, realised, um, stopped singing, um, Mark came in with a, with a lead into the solo, and I just went crowd surfing, uh, which was, it was quite a remarkable moment. I didn't know if he was gonna come back, quite honestly, but uh, he did. Uh, we finished the song, but. Uh, how did you feel, well, knowing that he was out crowd surfing, how did you feel keep playing your solo? Yeah, you just focus on what on what your job is and just kind of get to the end of it, really. But at the same time, you were, were you aware. Looking? You can't, you can't <laughs> help but be aware of this figure going through the crowd, oh, I'm not sure that's going to work out <laughs> so well. So you're sort of standing there, oh, uh, do, yeah. Is well, you know, you expect him to come back on stage uh, semi-naked, you know, <laughs> <laughs> people getting a souvenir. Well, I remember uh, that. He came back in, he came back in one piece and then a couple of minutes later his, his power pack was crowd right. surfed back as well. <clears throat> yeah, his radio pack, yeah. Which was brilliant. Well, I think we should, I think we should watch that now. So do you want to introduce it? From the Marillion Weekend in 2009, this is This Strange Engine. Keep watch! 
fantastic to watch thanks Steve Thank for that you. memory I've got a question because obviously we just saw that and uh, I know we weren't looking at your equipment during that piece of footage we were watching H crowd surf I'm sitting here looking at all this equipment down here and uh, I'm sure some other people would like to ask what what do these pedals do what do well, you use them all for <clears throat> it's complicated there's so many pedals down here uh, but this my main live rig is controlled via MIDI from this unit here, this ground control that sends what's called MIDI program changes to the different units behind me, the gig rig G2s, which select different combinations of effects and sounds and delay times, etc. So between each section of the song, I would hit, hit a switch. Uh, the volume pedal combined with a tuner, my radio pack, some pedals that I used doing the... Um, recording of uh, of the last album uh, a compressor and, a, and an overdrive pedal um, a load of stuff in the rack there behind me different things reverbs delays uh rotosphere which is like a leslie simulator uh, adrenaline um yeah a lot of stuff and then i've got another pedal board down here which is what i use for my solo stuff uh and I'm, i can combine the two and have two different sounds happening at the same time which is very uh, interesting will all, will all this be coming to the really no, weekends just, with you just this one but I will, i'm going to try and use this as we start writing the next studio album i'm going to use some of the sounds from this uh, so for whatever we then tour the next album i would probably have it with me. so stupid question you know i don't know all this stuff what happens if you press 
the wrong sound on stage? I mean, does it? would it literally just, or would it be that us mere <clears throat> humans wouldn't notice? No, you'd notice. <laughs> you'd notice. Yeah, that occasionally happens because, you know, you hit the switch underneath by mistake and like you go to a solo and instead of, <laughs> it goes blink, blink. Um, so yeah, very noticeable indeed. Uh, I try and minimize that. Minimize so that so is that school. why you don't like dry ice being used on the stage? Because <clears throat> then you can't see your pedals. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or even sometimes when Jens is uh, doing his Master of Darkness thing and you can't actually see your fretboard. So you've got no idea where, where you are on the neck. So therefore that can get very ugly very quickly. Um, that's another thing you've got to watch out for. Hello, I am Mona, I am in Switzerland, and my favorite memory is also one of the very first few memories that I have in general from my life, entirely. So, I did come to the realization that far before I could remember most of the other things from my life, I did see H playing the midi gloves during The Uninvited Guest. I have no idea what concert it was, unfortunately, but my parents listened to Marilyn a lot. So I literally know the band since I can remember, and this realization makes this my favorite memory. What is your favorite month? Oh, it's a toss up really, between December and June. What is your favorite season? Summer. Favorite animal? Dogs. Favorite color? Black. Favourite food? Oh, there's loads. Bread and butter pudding with custard. What word do you hate hearing? Word. One word. Hmm. Skint. <laughs> Where did you go on your last holiday? Uh, oh. You know, we have so many holidays, I find it hard to remember. Los Angeles. Oh yes. Oh, it was really nice. Yeah. Yeah, it was warm and I saw some old friends. If you had to change your first name, what would you change it to? <laughs> Wendy. Name a four-letter word that starts with the letter B. Ball. Do you like Valentine's Day? Yes. Do you decorate for Christmas? Kind of. What has been your favourite age to be so far? 26. If you could afford any car, what one would you drive? A black badge Rolls Royce. Finish this phrase, the way to my heart is. <laughs> no, I can't, that, that's just divorce. What is one thing you wish you enjoyed more? <laughs> Playing to click tracks. Would you ever appear on a reality TV show? Oh, yeah, maybe. Maybe. Would your 12 year old self think that you were cool? Not particularly. Do you think you would make a good spy? Yes. Work or play? Oh, work. Money or happiness? Oh, well, can't you have both? Happiness. Morning or evening? <laughs> Evening. Salty or sweet? Sweet. A night in or a night out? Uh, night in. Would you rather travel to the past or to the future? Future. Do you believe in second chances? Yes. What is your deepest fear? <laughs> Not getting a second chance. <laughs> Would you want to hear a harsh truth about yourself, even if it was unflattering? Yes. What do you think people misunderstand about you? <laughs> that I've got a good sense of humour. What is humanity's worst quality? Oh, just read the papers. What is humanity's most redeeming quality? Forgiveness. So Steve, we are now going to use this randomizer mm -hmm. to pick 
one of the comments from YouTube. I think we had over a thousand comments left. A thousand people entered for the competition to win all the stuff that Ian showed in the in the last film. So okay. could you press that button? That's it. Press that button. Who have we got? Storm Brewer. Shall I? I think. Oh, that's typical, isn't it? Storm Brewer has won the competition and it says his comment was Steve R has the most excellent taste in movies. How could <laughs> well, that Obviously a man of fixed. great intelligence and discrimination. That's unbelievable. <laughs> well, Storm Brewer, whoever you are, we will be sending you a message and then we can organise you picking up your winnings. I'm yeah. just I'm putting my glasses on and I'm just gonna read a couple of the comments that were left because I'm sure you didn't scroll through a thousand comments. Funnily enough, no I didn't. Someone called Quartz said, great to have a monthly update, brilliant idea. Nice to see and hear Crow and the Nightingale live as well. The mix was so good at Montreal that when the choir noir part came in, I burst into tears and goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really lovely to see this show debut. Oh, this was Kevin LaRue. Uh, can never get enough con connections with my favourite band in the world, as my wife can attest. Cheers and keep them coming, gang. I think what a lot of people have requested is a bit of Steve Rothery cocktail corner. Would you be up for that one, oh, Mum? Of course. Oh, well, I kind of did that, didn't I, with the Cows Convention? The trick with cocktails is to make them taste innocent. It's kind of slightly fruity. Um, so people can enjoy them without worrying too much about the alcohol content. But uh, there's always room for more cocktails. That's what I thought. Are you yeah. still? Are you still making? Did you make cocktails on the last tour? Did you have a cocktail night? In in uh, the first night in in Utrecht. The first night that was, was dangerous, the, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Well, then people can sleep it off in a hotel. <laughs> um, Did but they? It's funny. No, some people didn't take me up on it actually it was only all the people who'd already had a cocktail seemed to say thanks no thanks i don't know why that is really yeah i wonder why i have no <laughs> idea anyway cheers everyone take care bye i love this uh steve hammond i'd drifted away from marillion's music but friends who are great fans have brought me back in the last decade or so and i've loved seeing your concerts and listening to your new music i've already booked for my first ever weekends at leicester and harlem is very tempting too yeah harlem. Come, come to the harlem yeah, i've harlem. never been no. tell me about harlem harlem's a really beautiful city uh probably one of the nicest that uh, we've we've played in actually over the years so yeah i would recommend it if you're thinking about it yeah and i've just uh i haven't told you this sorry surprising you i've just uh <laughs> yeah. signed lazuli lazuli is that how you say it as the support act right that's great no they I've, I've heard great things about them Phil Briggs, it was lovely to see the Crow and the Nightingale performance in Leicester. See how much love Crow and the Nightingale is getting? Know, I know, yeah. Unbelievable. I'm convinced that the An Hour Before It's Dark concert at De Montfort Hall was the best gig I've ever seen by any band. So I was standing just to the left of the mixing desk and I saw Lucy with plenty of tears in her eyes at the phone lights that came on during care. It was such an emotional moment, it set me off as well.
I've got a question from Cams12. He said, oh, thank you, that was a great show. I've got to wonder, though, how Steve Rothery has time to make and practice music with all the TV that he watches. Mm. Well, we did have an 18-month uh, pandemic lockdown where you had not much chance to do anything else, really. It's, it's funny, I'd say, you know, films probably as much influences as sort of listening to music, really. Uh, I've always been kind of attracted to the cinematic uh, elements and, and the way that music can really enhance and paint a picture. Uh, Is that why you do the Space album as well? Because you're yeah. intrigued by space. Well, yeah, it's just it's just really, I mean, it's amazing, fascinating and humbling, you know, our place in the cosmos. Um, but it's, yeah, very inspiring. Um, and again, from an, uh, uh, an early age, uh, it's had a fascination for me. Recent uh, addition to that list, uh, Slow Horses on Apple TV, which I recommended to you. You recommended Lucy. to us and we binged uh, watched both. And, and did you know that Will Smith... Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Will Smith is the writer of Slow Horses. He's done the thick of it. But he also, many years ago, did a stand-up show about misplaced childhood, which was incredibly funny. As you can imagine, and we got to meet Will through through that, and he is a fantastic guy. Yeah. Um, so I'm so pleased he's been writing Slow Horses. Did you notice one of the characters was called Derek Rothery? I did, yes, <laughs> yes. He said, I, I messaged him, and he said that there were some more clues in there right. in the series about the band. But I haven't noticed them. I think we should go back and watch it yes, again. Yes, yeah, but it was, it's brilliant. And yeah. Gary Oldman's performance in particular is just a masterclass in acting. Hello, my greatest moment was in October 2009 in Halen, Holland. I was at work that morning and I was watching the movement around the tour bus and suddenly I saw Steve Hogarth coming out of the bus. I hit the brakes, ran out of my police car to meet Steve. I took a few pictures and I was invited inside. I also had the chance to meet brothers who gave me a nice less is more guitar pick. It is now time for our competition from Marillion Monthly. And to introduce it, here's Steve. Hello. So this is for all the subscribers to the Marillion YouTube channel. It's your chance to win a pair of tickets for any of the Marillion weekends, with the exception of Port Zealand. So what do they have to do again? <laughs> <laughs> so what, I'll lean in on this one. So what you, I'll just, I'll just talk Steve from the background. <laughs> You're ventriloquist, darling. This competition is for subscribers only, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and we will pick a winner from our list of subscribers and we will be... This is only available to subscribers of our channel, so we will pick a winner and we will be in touch. Right, right. now I'll explain. Ask me that question on camera. So, wasn't this for people who made left a comment on the um, Marillion page? That's what the first competition was, but we looked at the analyticals, ooh, and 50% of the people who made a comment weren't subscribed to our channel. Mm. And we're trying to encourage people to subscribe to the channel. Makes so sense. we thought for the second competition, we would do it for subscribers only. Please leave comments because we love reading the comments. So please carry on doing that. But we really want people to subscribe. Yeah, subscribe. Okay, well, what we're actually doing this week uh, is working on some ideas from the album I'm doing with Steve Hackett, who's arriving here at Club Raquet um, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. I was, I'm just going to interrupt and say, you never tell me anything. I didn't know he was coming down, but glad to hear it. Okay, well... <laughs> uh, but, I mean, some of these ideas were f recorded in this room that we're working on, uh, I think, six years ago, nearly. So it's taken a while to, to get, you know, he's very busy, we're very busy, Lucy keeps us very busy. And, um, you know, I, I, I tend to have a lot of things happening. I'm still working on my Reventule space-themed 
uh, album. And once uh, we stop working with Steve, probably Ricardo and I will do a couple of days on that. So this is an album for you, Steve Hackett and Ricardo? Well, it's me and Steve Hackett, basically. I, I flew Ricardo over to, to help because uh, otherwise it's just two guitarists in a room and you can only go so far with that. You know? Well, that brings me to another ignorant question. Two guitarists in a room, who gets the solo? Both of us. At the same time? Not necessarily. <laughs> maybe, maybe some harmony parts. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we've got very different styles. I mean, some of these ideas are things that I've come up with the chords and, and Steve's done that doing his thing over. But this, this was just this writing session. When We'll probably write some more ideas over the next couple of days. And who knows who will be the instigator of those ideas. But what we've got is very diverse. It's very interesting and, and quite fun, actually. Oh, so, that sounds really yeah. good. The other thing that I'm doing, as well as these two particular albums, this album, of course, with Thorsten from Tangerine Dream, who I'm playing with at the Berlin, or probably, I don't know, has that been confirmed for the fan club? I think it has, right, in the Right, yeah, the so we'll probably play in, in the small room the, the day before, on the Thursday, with, with Thorsten. And that's another very different from the other two projects. So, yeah, so, uh, yeah I do keep myself busy. So, and, yes, there will be volume two of Postcards at some point. So... Just need to interject here. When I was working at EMI, in the, he, I can see his face and I'm looking at the camera. When I was working at EMI in the 90s, I remember contacting, uh, Steve contacted me and asking me if the URL www.postcardsfromtheroad.co.uk could be put into the sleeve notes of the remaster series because it was coming soon imminent but you can't rush these things and it was 21 years later that it was released so when he says there's going to be a volume two yes but it's not like i haven't been doing anything in the meantime you know that has been a quite a lot of recording of, and touring with marillion and a few other solo things so i was going to say yeah. we hadn't finished talking about your solo stuff because i've noticed and i do know about these in the diary you're doing some gigs this summer would you like to tell us about those yes i am i'm doing the first one in band on the wall in june uh do two nights um and the same sort of thing in uh in the netherlands in the border eye in the beginning of september then three single night shows through scandinavia then two shows in cologne uh, and then the week after, I think, or maybe two weeks after, uh, a weekend in Warsaw, and then a weekend in Stockholm. And then Is I'm not doing anything else for a while. Well, I was going to say, so the band have got July, July, August and September off, and you're just making yourself really, really busy. Make myself very popular with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. But then again, you know, she's flying around the world with me for a lot of this year. So and we're having a, having a lovely time in Italy around the, the Meridian weekend there. So, are you? Is she going to any of your solo concerts? She'll be coming to Manchester and maybe Cologne. I, well, I'm glad you've told her this time. Yeah, well. <laughs> Last time she didn't know until she saw the tour dates printed on the back of the well, T-shirt. Sometimes that's how I found out about the Marillion tours. It's like, oh, look, we're going there. Uh, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> no, that will be because you haven't read the email. No, no, <laughs> no, no. There was a tour. Anyway, let's not go What's there. That? Yeah, yeah. What tour was. was that? That was about five years ago. Uh, the first I knew of it was, anyway, yeah. <laughs> We're going to have a scrap. <laughs> it was on a need-to-know basis. And just being in the band isn't enough of a need-to-know. Anyway. Uh... Excuse us. Um, have you got any support acts at your solo shows? Yes. Uh, in Manchester, for the two nights, I have I Am The Morning. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. Uh, in, uh, in the Netherlands, in De Bordere, I've got District 97. All the way from America? All the way from America. Wow. Uh, for the three Scandinavian shows, I've got Ramestrane. Um, oh, yeah. Then for the Cologne shows, uh, Dave Foster will be doing a, a support one night as well as playing, obviously, and Ricardo the second night. Um, in Poland, um, I've got uh, Collage, the uh, Polish band whose um, album I played on. 
and the album went to number one uh, and I'm going to get up and guest with them during their set and play that solo with them. <gasps> Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert, which is going to be you know, a lot of fun. The lovely guys are very talented. Uh, Stockholm, the, it's a bit of a strange situation, so there won't be any supports because basically there's two bands playing the same venue and we have like an early show in there. So we have uh, the remainder of the evening uh, off in Stockholm. So better take me wallet is all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we did love Stockholm though when oh, we played beautiful. there. Oh, it's beautiful. I could live there. If you've enjoyed watching today's show, can you please leave us some comments down below about maybe things that you'd like to see or hear in future episodes of this? You can leave a comment or you can just tell me. <laughs> Fair enough. And remember, we really do need you to subscribe to the channel. A lot of the competitions and things going forward will probably be for subscribers only. Sorry. Um, so subscribe and like to the channel. It's easy. It doesn't cost you anything. Thanks again to the fan who sent in their video that you saw at the very beginning. Uh, that's two fans we've had now. So we need a third one for next month. So please send in your film to the address below of you saying, hello, my name is Steve Rothery and welcome to Marillion Monthly in brackets. Don't say you're Steve Rothery if you're not. So the way to contact us is always in the comments. Oh God, I did that stupid face again. I did, didn't I? And do remember to send us in your clips of your favorite Marillion memory. The details are in the description below. So thank you for your time today, Steve. You're very welcome, Lucy. What have we got? Four weeks till Port Zealand? Mm, yeah, three and a half. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope you enjoyed being part of this. And the absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the money later. Yeah. No, thank you. The check's fine. <laughs> Seriously, thank you for being part of it. By the time this goes out, it will be about a week till Port Zealand, so I'm sure we won't all be as calm as we are now. Um, and we look forward to seeing you in our next episode, which will definitely feature highlights of Port Zealand. Um, and uh, see you then. Hi. Coming up, oh, f sake. <laughs> that was, oh, that was just like children's television. Hello, boys and girls. On today's episode, Lucy is going to have a nervous <laughs> breakdown. <laughs> you know. So you just, you can look at me with love while I film this.